In this first example, we have the square root of 16. And so we're going to start by just breaking this down to its prime factors. So for 16, there are several ways you could do it, but I like 2 times 8. Then the 8 will break down to 2 times 4. I like to cross off the 8 when I'm done using it. And then the 4 will break down to 2 times 2. So then I'm going to put all of those prime factors back into a radical. However, we want to be able to write them in exponent form using our index as our exponent. And so our index here, when you don't see one, remember, is a 2. So that means I want to write these as an exponent of 2, which means I'm basically looking for pairs. So if I take this, that's 2, 2, so I can write that as 2 squared. And then I have another set of 2s, 2s. <laughs> So that's another 2 squared. Um, and so now I can take a look at this and remember when our exponent matches our index as it does, there's our index, so here are both of our exponents and they are matching our index, we can pull those bases outside. So I can pull this base of 2 outside, this will cancel, and then I can pull this base of 2 outside and it will cancel. So there's nothing left in my radical anymore. My radical is gone. And 2 times 2 is 4. So the square root of 16 is 4. Let's do that in the next one with the square root of 36. So again, we're going to start by breaking this down into its prime factors. So I like 9 times 4. The 9 will break down to 3 times 3. And the 4 will break down to 2 times 2. There was also um, 2 times 18, 3 times 12. Any of those will work. 6 times 6, any of that will work. Um, you will get down to the same prime factors. So after that, we are going to put these into the radical. And again, we want to write them in exponent form so that our exponent matches our index, which again is a 2. When you don't see the index, you write it as a 2. So I have here two 3's, so that can be written as 3 to the second power. I also have two 2's, so that can be written as 2 to the second power. And then remember when that exponent matches our index, we can pull the base outside. So 3 is my base here with an exponent of 2, and then we also have a 2. So those cancel, so again my radical is gone and I just have 2 times 3, which is 6. All right, so now we have this last one, 144. And um, this is a larger number, and so we could go all the way down to those prime factors. But there is also, I just want to show you that 144, a lot of you know it's 12 times 12. Well, if we were to write that in exponent form, do you agree that that is 12 to the second power? And if our index is 2, could we go ahead and say that this base would come outside and we'd have no radical left over? Yeah, we could. So if you ever see that, that also happens here where 16 can also be 4 times 4. And so 4 squared, if we take that base outside, it's just 4. 36 is 6 times 6, which makes the square root 6. But if you don't remember that, you can continue writing your prime factors. So this becomes 4 times 3, so this is 2 times 2, this is 4 times 3, so this is 2 times 2. So when I put these all back inside a radical, I have a pair of 2's, so that's a 2 squared. I have another pair of 2's, that's another 2 squared. And then I also have a pair of 3's, don't forget about those. So that's a 3 squared. So I can pull out a 2 here, I can pull out a 2 here, and I can pull out the 3 here. So my entire radical cancels. Now I have 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, so our square root is 12.